Today I'm here with Jamie Page from the Cancer Prevention and Education Society and we're going to have a look at Jamie's perspective on things. Are there not more cases of cancer around just because people are living longer? Okay. Well, firstly, um, cancer statistics are adjusted for an ageing population, that's one thing. Now, the other important thing is that the rates of cancer in children have been rising steadily for the last 20 years at a rate of 1% per annum in Europe, including the United Kingdom. And the other thing, too, is that they've done a, a temporal index study, which is a complex way of looking at the age at which people get cancer, and they found that for prostate and breast cancer, the age of onset has been going down. So when you take those three factors into account, yes, cancer is a disease of ageing, but it's also people are getting it younger. Why is it you think that the government is so reluctant to acknowledge the environmental causes of cancer? Well, that's a very good question and something that we've been puzzling over for many years. Uh, it could be that there are many, many toxic substances out there that harm human health and, this, and because they're such an intrinsic part of everyday society, deciding which ones to focus on and where to start is a very difficult societal question. I've been hearing that there has been a change of attitude in, in the USA recently. Have, have you got evidence of that? Well, a very important uh, report has been produced by the uh, US Cancer Panel to the President, and they have said that the true burden of environmentally induced cancers has been grossly underestimated, and they strongly urged action to reduce uh, widespread exposure to chemicals that cause cancer. Could you give us some idea of the scale of the um, number of chemicals that have been released into the environment? Okay, well probably on the market there are something like 80,000 to 100,000 chemicals. The issue is uh, only a handful, about 200, have been tested for carcinogenicity. Now if we think disease process is more complex than just being a carcinogen, uh, for example, endocrine disrupting, sometimes called gender bending. If, if we're to test for all of those things, those things have never been tested. So there may be many, many substances, the vast majority may be, may be harmful that have never been tested, but more importantly evaluated by the regulators. Because if the companies that produce and say we've done the tests, the important thing is that the, the results of those tests are submitted to an independent a neutral regulatory authority who evaluates the data and says yes this is this product is safe based on the latest science not old toxicology tests which are obsolete now on the latest science so this is a challenge for regulators because the science is moving so fast they need to make sure that um, the products they're approving are, are being evaluated using the latest techniques and, and, and knowledge that we have and how many would you say of the chemicals available have actually been thoroughly tested I can't estimate, but a, but a very small percent. So there is this emerging science called green chemistry, and it's about designing and making molecules with good PBT profiles, low persistence, low bioaccumulation, and low toxicity. And if a chemist and the biologist get this right, it ticks all the boxes. Consumers need to be aware that not everything on the market has been properly regulated. That's a very important thing.